Hey guys, it's Adam from Adam's Eden, and today we're going to do a DIY hydroponic setup. Okay, this is very simple, something you can do at home with the kids, you can do it for yourself, you can do it as a project to kind of see what you can do at home, or you could actually get some, uh, you know, some actual vegetables, leafy greens out of this, you know, depending on how far you take it. All right, guys, let's go over some things that we're going to need for this. First things first, we're going to need a container. It's the most important thing, something to hold a solution, something for the roots to grow in, okay? We chose a protein jug. I work in a gym, and these protein jugs get thrown out left and right. Um, they hold about five pounds of protein, so I chose this. I peeled the outside off um, and just left this plastic. What I did do was take a number 80 grit sandpaper, and I roughed it up a little bit. And then I also took a rag with some rubbing alcohol and wiped down the whole thing. What that's going to do is allow it to be ready for paint, um, which leads us up to this, the spray paint. Okay, we're going to use the spray paint to coat this black. I have some green uh, brush on paint as well. And what that's going to do is going to protect this uh, solution in there from getting exposed to sunlight because the allergy will then be created and compete for nutrients with the plant. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, so we got our container. We got our paint. Um, we're going to need our nutrients. We're using Dino Grow. You can use any type of hydroponic nutrient. Uh, we're going to use a grow formula for this, being that um, we're starting it out. And um, you know, later down the road, depending on what you're growing, if you're growing tomatoes, peppers, you can switch to a bloom formula when you start getting those fruits on there. Okay. Now, what I've done is I've taken the cap off of this protein jug. I took my hole saw, my four-inch hole saw, Drilled a four inch hole inside here and I slid in a four inch net pot right in there, okay? That perfectly fit. It allows my net pot to be secured and be nice and firm, okay? Now, a little trick is when you're using these hole saws on any kind of plastic, because it is designed to be used on wood and building materials like that. So, when you're using it on a plastic, what you want to do is put the drill in reverse, okay? So, you put it on forward, you get the hole just started with this little center bit, then you flip your drill onto reverse and you finish doing the hole that way. It'll give you a cleaner cut, it won't crack your plastic, and trust me, you'll be glad you did. So that hole saw is optional. You can also trace out and cut with a marker, just allow you know, some room for the lip. You gotta be a little bit uh, fiddle with it, you know. but you can use a razor and totally cut out the hole and save a little bit of cost. I just happen to have it on hand, okay? Or you can go with a bigger net pot cut the whole top off and I was able to slide a six inch net pot right inside there so you know it's up to you guys the, the way that you want to go about doing that but the important thing is have a container with the net pot in it okay for me this makes more sense I can screw it right onto our container and screw it off when needed okay uh, I'm probably going to do a cracky style method where I'm not going to use an air bubble in there. If I was, I would drill a little quarter inch hole on the side where I would run for my air stone in the water. So the air stone is optional depending on your style of growing. And if you did have an air stone, obviously you would need a little fish bubbler pump, which you could buy at any pet store. Walmart also uh, We're up to the well. point at this hydroponic container now where we're going to spray paint the outside. Okay, so what I did was I drove some poles into the ground. Don't mind the, the little monkey in the way there. That's my boy Lex. Um, but we drove some poles into the ground. And as you can see on the left side, we put the protein container on there. This way as we spray paint it, we can do the whole thing in one shot, let it dry, and it'll be good to go. So this is what we're doing. You definitely want to shake your spray paint up thoroughly. You want it to spray proper. All right, guys, real quick, here's what it looks like painted. So on our right, we see the what used to be the white protein jug. Now it's a painted hydroponic container. It's got our net pot right inside the top. Okay. Put that right in there. Solution, fill it up in the container. You want to measure it so we can take a milk jug and measure one gallon at a time, pour it in, and see exactly how much we have. So let's go do that, and we'll be right back. What we are going to do is see how much nutrient solution it's going to hold. And right now it's just water, but once we add our DinoGrow Grow Blend, then this becomes a hydroponic solution. Right now it's just filtered tap water so it's from the street it's been filtered it's not 
um, unfortunately not reverse osmosis or distilled water which would be preferred when growing hydroponically because it doesn't have any minerals or anything else in the water okay um, this being tap water it is filtered but it still can have like things in there and different minerals in your water um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing but if it's in too high concentrations it could be uh, distilled water reverse osmosis water is zero parts per million it's just plain water so when you're you adding nutrients to that you truly just have whatever you put in that water in that water so there's no added minerals or anything like that that you didn't do yourself so right now it looks like it's gonna hold about one and three quarters of a gallon so we put one and three quarter teaspoon um, I might just jump to two teaspoons um, it's a little strong being that it's one teaspoon per gallon however I think the tomato can handle it because that's what we're doing guys we're gonna be taking this tomato which was a volunteer I don't know the variety at all it was a volunteer um, so I pulled it out and I'm gonna rinse off the roots get that cocoa coir off and get it into our clay pebbles and in our solution so let's do that and we'll be right back all right guys real quick this is what our tomato plant looks like in the neti pot we got the clay pebbles in we got the root ran right through we took the longest root and fed it through the bottom the rest we kept all up in there you kind of yeah, you really can't see that well and we did not ri rinse the clay pebbles however so what we're gonna do now is being that we didn't rinse them this is where I collect rainwater that's what this thing is right here I am just gonna pour some water on those clay pebbles rinsing any residue off so this way at least most of it will the residue will come off and not end up in our hydroponic solution all right so let's go throw this thing in our container and see the finished product okay guys well there is our finished product okay we got our tomato plant right inside that container which holds about two gallons roughly about a gallon three quarters to the bottom of the net pot of water so what we did was put it in there we just put it in so you guys can see what it looks like but I do want to show you when I lift the cap up the roots are in that water and the water is just coming into contact with the bottom of the net pot. What that's gonna do is allow the roots to soak up the nutrients and as the water level decreases the roots that need the oxygen are gonna remain in the top where the air is where that moist humid environment is and then the roots that need to suck up the nutrients and grab what it needs to grow from the water are gonna be in the water. Okay, and that's how we're going to do it without any air pumps, okay? Now, later down the road, depending on the development, okay, we may add an air stone in to speed things up. If it's doing well enough on its own, we may not. So, again, guys, I don't know the variety of this tomato. Really excited to see how it produces. Again, thank you for tuning in to Adam's Eden. Really, guys, I appreciate all your support. So, please click subscribe, share with a friend, and don't forget, most importantly, slam that like button. Well, guys, have a great day. God bless, and keep on growing on.